Come on, Tiffany. Let's come, to, let's come to order now. Let's come to order. Yeah, I see some walking around and talking. Okay. Let us be mindful that the offering is a part of worship. And that we are not to be walking around and doing some other things while others are trying to do their duties. So be, be watching that. I might be calling you out real soon because... It's not right. We're honoring God and not giving. Amen. And we're worshiping him. So let's be mindful to not be walking around and doing other things at the wrong time. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Before the choir come, I just wanted to uh, give a special thanks out to Brother Donnell Clemens this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Dan had an emergency. His mother got sick and he had to go out of town. And I called this brother and he stepped right in and he's doing a marvelous job today. Street. 
Let's give our young adults another hand and our children. They've done a marvelous job this morning. Let, let me thank uh, Minister Harrison. I tell you, he's done a marvelous job in our presiding preacher. Thank you so much. And done a wonderful job in our teaching this morning. Dealing, I tell you, you've done a great job, and we thank him for this morning. I want to, just a few words that I will say. We won't tr try to introduce this, this great preacher. We will uh, just present him, uh, um, Brother Minister Richard Harris. He is, um, he is the son of the Reverend uh, and Deacon uh, Harris at Mount Nebo Baptist Church. And she have preached here many times, and the pastors have been here many times. And today is uh, his mother's birthday. He's up to celebrate, and we thank God for him, and I told him to, to stop on by and bring a word, and this is what you do with friends. You know, when you have a friend, you got to know, be, be kind and know how to treat a friend, so I, I call him a friend of mine, so he's by today to uh, bring the message. Now, yeah, I, I'm not going into that. He's not married, and he didn't say he's looking, <laughs> but I just thought I'd throw that out there. So, but, but he's in Karen. He's from Karen, North Carolina. That's between Durham and uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. There he was up here, but he moved there now. So let's welcome him as he come, as God has sent him unto us. Let us uh, uh, receive our preacher this morning as he bring the word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come just first thanking you for meeting us here in this place. Thank you for the songs that have already been sung, the scriptures that have been read, the prayers that have been prayed. But now I ask God that you be in the preach word. We come to hear a word from you this morning. Ask what is said is not what I want to say or what the people want to hear, but we hear a word from you. For your word, it can claim sinners, it can reclaim backsliders, and it can encourage believers. Lord, please send your word by. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Our souls say amen. 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 First, give an honor to God and to Bishop Flowers, all ministers on the roster. Amen. Again, it's just good to be here at Shining Star. Amen. As Reverend Flowers, Bishop Flowers said that he considers us to be, me to be a friend. I thank God for the friendship with Bishop Flowers and Shining Star down through the years. Amen. For those of you who have your Bibles, we'll ask that you would turn to the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3. Amen. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 3. And we'll read verses 17 through 19. Amen. When you have it, please say amen. Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Amen. Amen. And it reads, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places to the chief stringer, singer of my stringed instruments. Amen. Thus ends our reading. This morning, we would like to preach from the subject, check what you have. Amen. Check what you have. And the subtopic would be, we're going to make it with the Lord. <clears throat> check what you have. We're going to make it with the Lord. Habakkuk is one of the 12 minor books of the Old Testament. It deals with the frustrations of the Israelites and Judeans that they faced and teaches how one can maintain faith, hope, and joy in an extended period of adversity and trouble. In our text, Habakkuk reveals some devastating occurrences, crop failure and the death of flocks. It was the destruction of livelihood, of income, the sustenance would follow. It, it was what the people depended on to make it. Without the crops and the flocks, there would be barren fields and emptiness. It would be difficult to make it. But Habakkuk, he transitions and says, though these things happen, I will rejoice in the Lord. 
Maybe you cannot relate to, the, to crop failure, but there are some barren fields of life, right. places where there can be emptiness. Maybe there's some spiritual emptiness where you feel disconnected from God, isolated, inconsistent, inactive, wondering what your purpose may be. Maybe it's some marital emptiness where you're frustrated by, the, by your spouse. You, you want them to change. You, you lack togetherness. Each day you find yourselves growing further and further apart. There, there's no investment. There's no improvement. There's no intimacy. The fights and conflicts seem to be the way of life. For those who are single, the dating scene it seems to only have letdowns. Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright, they, they turned out to be the exact opposite of who you thought they were or, or and sometimes who we make them out to be. There's familiar emptiness where there's a lack of relationship with your children. The, the children lack understanding of the parents. The children are doing what they want. The parents are having no time for their children. It, it's despair, disappointment, discouragement, hurt feelings. When you see one another, stress is the immediate reaction. Maybe there's social emptiness where your friends are only on social media. In-person interaction only has conflict. You're unaccepted. You find yourself constantly angry, aggravated, annoyed by, by what those around you are doing. And you often ask yourself, what's wrong with everybody else? It could be financial emptiness. Yes. Where you have bills on top of bills. You, you let the phone ring because you feel it's a bill collector. You're unable to save. Most of your basic needs are not provided for. There's no stability. There, there is a daily struggle. Maybe it's vocational emptiness where you're unemployed or underemployed. You, you dread going to work. You don't want to wake up and go in and you clock watch all day. The, the weekends, they're too short, but the weekdays, you find them to be too long. Maybe it's some health emptiness where you're tired, you're low in energy, you, you, your weight is higher than you want, you find yourself sleepless, you're addicted to a substance or action that you know is not healthy or good for you. You're angry, wrathful, anxiety-filled, worry-filled, fighting often, whether it's physically or verbally. The same knowledge you had not too long ago is what you currently have right now. Right. Learning is little. There's little to no learning at all, and you have no interest in anything. These are some of the types of emptiness that we face today, the barren fields of life. As a result, we lack joy, we're broken, we're discouraged, we often want to give up, and we don't know what to do. But if you're in this situation, I encourage you to check what you have. Whatever you experience, determine that you're going to make it with the Lord. But what can we learn from Habakkuk on making it with the Lord? We pray we'll be able to learn from Habakkuk to have joy, have God as our strength, and to have God's promises. Yes, Habakkuk, he said his joy was not based on what happened to or around him, but it was an inner sense that all is well no matter the circumstances. For us, although our livelihood is gone and things are not going right, yet I will rejoice. If I'm in uncomfortable situations, yet I will rejoice. There, there's confusion all around me, but yet I will rejoice. Although it's difficult, yet I will rejoice. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I will take the light in God despite the circumstances that I face. The psalmist said, this is the day which the Lord has made. He says, we will rejoice and be glad in it. James says, count it all joy when you enter into divers temptations, knowing that this, that the trying of your faith work is patience. We, we have reason to rejoice in the Lord. But with the joy of the Lord, we, we also have to have the Lord as our strength. For Habakkuk, it was not reliance on himself or others, or it wasn't his environment or, or his livelihood, but he was not looking at the situation or circumstances. These occurrences in verse 17, they would overwhelm most of us, but, but with God, it's not over. We have to realize that the Lord God is our strength. That statement that Habakkuk made, it was a personal statement, but it also was a present statement. It was right now, in this moment, he recognized that God was his strength. It takes a relationship and knowing him. Another person that knew about it was Isaiah. For Isaiah, he said, has thou not known? 
Hast thou not heard that the everlasting Father faints not, neither is he weary? There is no searching of his understanding, but he gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases their strength. With God as our strength, even in our tiredness and weariness, we remain strong. For his power and strength never diminishes. He's mighty. He's strong in battle. He's a fortress, a shield, and a buckler. We must have God as our strength. But, but to do this, it takes some patience. We have to endure some things. We may see some, seem, some, it seem as though some things are not happening, but, but we have to realize that God is still working. We must set our eyes on the Lord. The salvation of the righteous is of the Lord, for he is their strength in the time of trouble. As we have joy and have God as our strength, we, we also must have God's promises. If we have his promises, he, at Habakkuk, he says, he will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places. And if you know anything about deer's feet, they can go on some rough and rugged ground. If they, they're deer's feet, they're pretty sure-footed. No, no matter what's underneath, they can still keep their foot. That's what Habakkuk was saying. If I have God with me, no matter what comes, I have a strong foundation. What he's saying is that his hope was in God, not his possessions or his livelihood, but he was resting on God's promises. We mentioned earlier in Isaiah, but Isaiah, he continued. He said, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Joy and strength come is, comes from being rooted in God's presence. Yes, Josh said to, Jer to jo Joshua, he said, be strong and of good yes, courage. Yes. Only be strong and very courageous. He, he said, have I not I commanded you to be strong and of good courage, but yes. be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. We must realize that his promises says that he's faithful, yes. he's merciful, he is good, yes. and he does good. Yes. James said that the, yeah. excuse me, Jesus, it, Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulation, yes. but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. We must rest on his promises knowing that he takes care of us. We must stand on the promises of God for Jesus. He, he said, come unto me, uh, all that labor and are heavy laden, and, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So I ask, how are you going to make it? Make it with the Lord. He's inviting you even now. Don't make this year, don't make this month, don't make this day, don't make it about weight loss, don't make it about new jobs, don't make it about new homes, don't make it about better parenting, stronger relationships, it's not about more money, it's not about better health, but we need to make it about God. We must keep the book. We must meditate it on it day and night. And, but not only that, we must live it out. We, we must do it. We, we must seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. We must say, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. We talked about the deer's feet, but then there's something else in the book about the deer. It says, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul thirsts for the living God. We must learn about the Godhead, for we should be able to say, God is my refuge and strength, a present help in the time of trouble. Yes, God is my rock, and he's my salvation, uh, my defense, and my expectation. For power belongs to God. We must know about Jesus, our Savior, Emmanuel, God with us. We need to get to know him as a wonderful, as counselor, as a prince of peace, the everlasting father, the, the mighty God. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, but with his stripes we are healed. At his name, every knee will have to bow, and every tongue will have to confess that he is Lord. We may put it off, but one day each and every one of us will have to bow. We must learn about the Holy Spirit, our comforter. He's not giving us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, wisdom, a sound mind. For where the Spirit is, there's liberty. We, we must bear the fruit, love, joy, peace. 
patience, yes. gentleness, yes. kindness, goodness, yes. faithfulness, yes. and self-control. So I encourage you, check what you have. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of power may be of God and not of us. We, we must put off the old man of anger and wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Let me say it again. Put off the old man of wrath, of anger, wrath, malice, filthy communication out of your mouth and put on the new man which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. For, for you are his workmanship, created for God's good pleasures. We must realize that we are the salt of the earth, the, the light of the world. We must let our light shine so men can see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. And we have to realize it's not about me and it's not about you. Not unto us, O oh Lord, but unto you belongs the glory. Whatever we do in word or deed, we should do it all in the name of the Lord. Lord, giving thanks to God the Father by him. We must praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. So again, I ask, how are you going to make it? Check what you have. Decide and determine that you're going to make it with Jesus. Have joy and have God as your strength and have the promises of God. We can make it if we decide we're going to make it with Jesus. For, for there's something about that name. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about the name of Jesus. In that name, there's healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. There's peace in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. I, I don't know what's keeping you captive, but call on Jesus. Call him on Jesus, knowing that he will make a way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We have to have a relationship with him. I, I'm not telling you just about what I read in the book, but as I've been in North Carolina, I've experienced some things. I knew God as my mama's God. I knew him as my daddy's God. I, I even knew him as their elder flower's God, but, but now I know him as my God. Even better, I, I've been through some things. I've been disappointed. I've had some setbacks. I, I've had some barrenness. My, my finances have been in the burgundy. That, in case you don't know, that's deep red. But, but God has been my provision. Vision. He, he's been my protector and my provider. So if you're not going to do it, I know how I'm going to do it. I'm going to check what I have, and I'm going to make it with the Lord. God bless. Make it with the Lord. Check what you got. Come on, check it, check it, check it. You can make it, but you got to check what you got. Huh? Come on, give this preacher a hand. Can he bless you? He blessed me. This man stayed in the book. Stayed in the book. Check what you have. He said, I don't know about you. He said, he got Jesus. Got him for himself. Stand on your feet, Let's give the Lord a hand praise just for this man of God coming by blessing us this morning. Amen. I tell you, I will say this to him as my uncle said to me some 30 some years ago. He keep preaching like that. He can't go wrong. God will bless him. He will open doors and give him that which he needs. The doors of the church. Stand now open as it was over 2,000 years ago when Jesus said, Come unto me. All that labor and have heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. If you're here this morning and, and you know yourself that you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, why don't you make that commitment this morning? Come up front and be a part of this family at Shining Star. If you're here, you can come as a candidate for baptism on your Christian experience of my letter. Why don't you ask the person if you know they're not saved or maybe you, you know they're saved. Just ask them to check, you, uh, check yourself. Check your relationship with God and see are you sure about what you have? Are you in the building today as a candidate for baptism? Own your Christian experience. Give myself away. Mothers, daughters, fathers, sons. So you 
Uncle's on. You have somebody here that is not saved. Life is so short. We should not put off for tomorrow what we can do today. I see one come. Give myself away. daughter up for a dedication but that'll be on the first Sunday that'll be on the first Sunday are there one man woman a boy or girl coming as a candidate for baptism on your Christian spirits about it this is the moment and consider this if you would die are you sure that you have everlasting life with Christ Jesus. Are you sure that you will spend those beautiful years, years with Christ? If you're not sure, come up and let us talk with you. Let us pray with you. Praise God. If not, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. God bless you. We're going to do the dedication on next Sunday. And uh, she was told but uh, this Sunday, but we'll do it so we can do it right just before the altar call and all that. So we thank her for remembering and, and bringing the daughter up. So y'all be blessed. God bless you, daughter. You'll be blessed. Amen. Amen. We are getting, let's give our musicians and our choir another hand today. Minister Carton, thank you for such a great job presiding all of our preachers. We, let me come back up there. Y'all didn't think I could do that, did you? I, I'm not going to do it over one time. Amen. But we thank God. Thank God for, for this man preach. And I tell you, I tell you, he's coming back too. He's coming back because he blessed, blessed me because he didn't get up there talking about no. Jack and Jill went up the hill and get some water. He went in the book. And he, he was right there where I understood everything. Amen. Check what you have. <laughs> That's enough right there. Amen. All right, we are getting ready to go now. We want to thank our... Our preachers again. Brother Nelson, come on.